Well, you heard I'm a coach, and I will tell you that I didn't set out to be a football coach, uh, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk more about uh, what I've learned from it. And, you know, the road not taken, this is an unusual thing. It's an unusual, uh, unusual path to take. And I want to talk more about not what I've done for them or for, or for the kids, for women, for whatever, um, but what the journey has done for me and what I've learned from it. And that is learning about me, which is pretty scary. Um, myself, who is that? So, teacher moment, fist to five. Do you agree with the statement I'm about to make? Five being I totally agree, fist being I don't agree at all. I represent what came to your mind when you first heard female football coach. Yeah, that's about right. And notice I have a fist up too. So um, that kind of threw me into this journey to like, oh my God, I've got to figure out who I am because everybody's watching me now. Um, I didn't expect any of this. So who do I think I am and who do I think I have to be in order to fulfill this role? Uh, I was kind of thrown into it. Lights, camera, action. There was tons of cameras. There was interviews. There was, do you want to be on Survivor? We want to make a movie about you. And I was like, um, oh my God. So, <laughs> so I'm just like, I need to figure out something to give these people, but I hadn't even figured it out for myself. Um, so what do we do? Uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So I'm like, you know, then that, that's a varying, a varying spectrum. We all do it. If you go to a formal event, you're not going to wear jeans. Um, to when you are first year in corporate America and you go on that company golf trip knowing that you don't know anything past putt-putt at the beach. And then there's the more serious things, you know, like in our, our past uh, presentation uh, with W.E. Du Bois talked about Negro Tunis and having to be one person, one place, and another person, another place. But you need both of those selves to survive. Um, and my, my issue was here. I was thrown into this. This was thrown into this. And yes, I played football, but I played football with women. You know, I love to watch football, but in college I, I locked myself in my room and I watched football Saturday and Sunday. And I didn't have to really share that with anybody else uh, until now. And so I had to quick, fast, in a hurry figure out who me was. And the kids really did that for me. And this is dedicated to them, uh, what they have taught me, what this whole thing has taught me about me. Uh, and there's three phases to that. You know, the first is who I think I am, which I just covered. And then there's what everybody else thinks. And, you know, that's always a big one. And then there's, you know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, the, the, the gold at the end of the rainbow is actually figuring it out. And no, okay, no to everybody, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not that old. I don't think we really will figure that out until, you know, years from now. Uh, but they taught me who I really am. Um, so here's what everybody else thinks. I know what others think I should be. I knew all of you were going to put the fist up. I know that. I know everybody does not look at me and think football coach. I know I stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, but then there's, but they expect me to be this. So, yes, you think I should be one thing. You know, you have an image of a football coach in your mind. And then there's what they actually expect. And a lot of times those two don't align. And what I mean by that is, you know, when the lights are on, everybody's like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, she's going to be great. But when you come down to it, it's like, oh, she's not being much at all. You know, some people actually thought, you know, it was going to work out great, but you find out later on in the road that some people really didn't have much confidence in you, and it kind of sucks after, you know, you, you thought they 
they were behind you, and then it's like, well, you really think I don't know anything. You really think I'm a dumb blonde, huh? <laughs> but, you know, you get over that, and, and things started to, to smooth out a little bit. And I had to, even though I hadn't figured it out yet, I had to pick a self to hold on to in order to assert myself so I could stay afloat in this world of what everybody else thought. Um, so that was kind of difficult too because there were lots of them. I was like, okay, which self am I going to pick today? And I had to just go with one and just stay with that. And sometimes I let it go and, you know, I, the consequences came and, and people were shaky and I was shaky and I was like, well, I got to get myself together. I got to calm down and get myself together and find the self back and, and just, you know, hold on to it. None of what anybody else thought I was or should be or would be or expected to be was me. None of that was actually me. It was all them. And I had to find out what was really me. Uh, and now the kids have taught me the answer to this question. Who am I? Um, who am I and who is me? And the thing about kids if anybody is an education major and just a little bit smidget of background, I teach in the inner city. Um, I teach in a Title I school. Most of the kids have free and reduced lunch. Um, and kids, until they're about like 19 or 20, are the best BS meters ever. They can spot BS, and I don't want to say the word, they can spot BS from a mile away. And if you give them BS, they're going to eat you alive. So self came like, OK, I really have to find the real self. There's no faking it here. And luckily, I had had a little bit of experience in that in the classroom you know, beforehand. But now coaching, it's like, OK, I'm not what they expect. So I'm not sure how to react or how they're going to react to me. And I know they're going to know I'm faking it if I try to fake it. And I don't really know who I am, so I am just utterly confused. But luckily, the first thing that they spot about you is whether or not you care. And at that point, you know, everything else goes out the window and, and they're kind of stuck to you, um, which, is, which is great. And uh, they taught me a lot. Um, Coaching taught me a lot. It was painfully obvious, you know, uh, who I was. And they taught me a lot of myself personally, but the most that I figured out was um, what I was forced to learn about me and this right here. I was a girl. I am a girl. And as much as sometimes I wish I was Harry Potter and could just turn into somebody else or put on that invisibility cloak, I could not. And just a quick example of that is there's this big national coaching conference every year, a national football coaching conference. And all of, you know, the thousand coaches are in this one area, this one hotel, and yours truly. And, you know, lots of these guys, they played in the NFL, they played in college. So I'm in a forest, and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, and everybody's looking at me. And I go in the general session, and, um, and it's like a 1,000 people in a general session. And, you know, people stroll in, and I strolled in, and I was like, wow, everybody's looking at me because I'm different and I just want to melt into the floor. But, you know, that kind of forces you to hold on to that. But the kids are one, uh, the kids don't do that. They, they, they see through you and then they just let it go. Uh, so I want to, I can't really explain it, and as you can probably see, I'm fumbling because there are really no words for that. So I want to kind of show you um, a little bit of what I mean with uh, some videos. Now, I'm not a videographer, you know, the transitions are really rough, so please don't judge me on, you know, the video I've put together for you. Oh, I forgot one thing. This is what everybody asks me all the time. Why do they listen to you? Those big boys, why do they listen to you? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not them. I, I can't tell you why they listen to me. Um, but I figured it out 
well, kind of, I think, is that I've, I'm finally comfortable and they've let me be comfortable with who I am and what I bring to it. Um, so now I'm gonna show you. We are the coach. This is the football part. You know, this is what I was thrown into. And even looking at it, I'm like, wow, how do I really fit into that? Um, this, this is the home game, you know, highlight tapes, and I'm immersed in this all the time, figuring out game plans, and it's still kind of surreal. Like, I feel like I'm, you know, looking in on somebody else's life, and like, that really doesn't make sense. But then there's this, and boys will be boys, and they are, they are who they are, and without apology, and it kind of makes you a little bit more comfortable uh, to be who you are around them, because they, they have no problems showing you who they are. And then the next one is um, something that would never happen unless they actually had a female football coach. Yeah, uh, this is them uh, playing in my hair which for some reason they enjoyed doing, and they competed over who could braid, make, make the best braid in my hair. Uh, and I'm trying to do work uh, after school, and you know, this is the part where once they figure out you care, they don't let you go, yeah, that's, that's that. You know. All the time, they're right here. And I'm like, okay, I need some me time. Uh, and then there's... <laughs> so what you didn't hear is they're like, who's cuter? Who's cuter? He's ugly in the background. Whose teeth are whiter? Whose teeth are whiter, Randolph? I'm like, I really don't care whose teeth are whiter. Like, why, why are you bothering me? And I'm glad I actually started taping this because they're always like in my ear. And I'm like, I'm going to just turn on photo booth and just play and let it run because people need to see this at some point. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now you see it. And then there's, you know, prom. And this is, you know, kind of the endearing moment where you put it on the button ears and I had to shop for tuxedos and bow ties and ties. And I know how to tie a tie and I know how to tie a bow tie. Um, but I don't know how to dress myself that well, but I can dress them. And, you know, driving around to, from place to place, looking for the tuxedo, taking pictures of the bow ties, sending to them, which one do you like? Okay, I'm gonna get this one. And then, you know, just trying to figure it all out, matching it, which one do you think looks better? I'm like, you know what, I've done enough, you, you pick it. Um, but, you know, they're all grown up now, so it's like, oh, my darlings. These, these guys are in college, one's at Shaw and one's at North Carolina a and and then the last thing I'm going to show you is, you know, the coup de grace, the, the big, the it. This is, this is, this is why, why I do this. And this is what kind of lets me know that they accept me and I accept them. And we just accept each other for all of our craziness. And there's only one word I'm going to say for it, and that is Adele. Am I not find someone like you? And they wanted the words, and they wanted me to take it. And then the next class wanted to do it. And then they kept asking me to tape it. And, and, and in the car, they asked me to play it over and over again. I don't know where they got it from. It wasn't me.
<laughs> yeah, so um, that, that is what words cannot, cannot tell you, is that in this journey, you know, everyone's like, oh, you gave them so much, you helped raise their GPAs, and, you know, they, they, are, they make you cry sometimes and say, oh, coach, you've done so much for me. I wrote a paper on you uh, in college and told everybody how much you meant to me. But this is really, that's what they gave me. They gave me me. And, and for that, I am eternally grateful. And the last thing I want to say is that if, any, if I've learned anything, I'm not Sigmund Freud, you know, with the whole self, all of that. But, you know, I, I can only be me. The best things happen when you let yourself be you. And, you know, the other stuff is hard. It's hard to figure it out. It's hard to go through what other people think. All that stuff is hard. And I always tell them, you know, good things never come easy. Uh, but once you get through all that nonsense, all that BS of what you think you should be and what other people think you should be, then, then there is the real, the real you uh, that comes out. And I would, I don't think, even though I haven't totally found it, I wouldn't be on the right track without, without these guys and without this opportunity. So it's a happy accident. And um, thank you for listening to me ramble. And, and thank you for uh, a great first TED experience. So.